born in Wales. I grew up in Wales. Uh, I went to school there. My first work was there. Whenever I'm in introduced on anything, it's always, ladies and gentlemen, Welsh comedian Rob Brydon, Welsh actor Rob. There's always the Welsh in front of it. But to me, Welsh seemed really uh, pessimistic, very gloomy, very depressive, always on a prescription for some illness or other. Bizarre antagonism towards the English, sort of bordering on hatred. And a lot of them speak a language that I just don't understand. But I've lived in London, you see, for almost 20 years now. So, you know, am I Welsh or am I English? And it's an identity crisis. An identity crisis, you know, a crisis of identity. Is what it is. I'm Welsh against any. Look at my hands. They have very thin skins in Wales. Loquacious dissemblers, immoral liars, stunted, bigoted, <laughs> dark, <laughs> ugly, pugnacious little trolls. <laughs> you look like a tit. Good God, Robert, yes! What the hell are you doing? There's a long tradition of really good humour, except we've kept it very quiet. The Rob Ryden! Oh, Tefwin Barry, Tefwin Giri, now it's like the idea. That's Welsh, isn't it? Now, you look appalled, the girl at the back, you see. <laughs> I'm gonna have a go! <laughs> Diane, guess who's dead? <laughs> oh, this, this is the worst feeling in the world. It's like a feeling like you just want to be somewhere else. Oh, I... Oh. Country that likes to say yes. Yes! <laughs> I'm about to set off on a, on a wonderful journey back to Wales. I'm going to speak to some friends, uh, lined up some experts. I'm going to speak to people on the street. The main thing, and the reason I'm a little worried and I might seem a little sort of edgy, is that I've booked a theatre to do an evening of stand-up comedy all about Wales. Now. You know, you may say, well, why, why am I nervous? I've played to lots of people. Yeah, but I've always done it in character as Keith Barrett. What is your name? Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie. All right, don't be aggressive. <laughs> not going to jump up on the stage and happy slap me, are you? <laughs> I'm sorry, Lowry, I'm very sorry. I'm under a lot of pressure on this stage. <laughs> and also... The, the Keith material isn't all about Wales. I want this to be entirely about Wales. So I'm hoping that as I go around, as I travel around, that I pick up enough inspiration and enough ideas to do an hour of material on stage. Well, the first stop is to go and uh, visit a friend of mine who is a stand-up comedian uh, who works loads in Wales. So he should know what's what. His name is Chris Corcoran. So are you going to set some new Welsh zeitgeist? I'm not, you know, completely confident about it. I'm not like if I was doing Keith, I'd be, hey, I know this. This yeah. is a bit new, and I, my worry is, right, I've got, I've got ten minutes of good, strong stuff, maybe twelve minutes, but after that, I just go blank. I still have moments like that where you... exactly that feeling where you just go, that didn't go quite as... and then you know what's coming up, and you kind of go, oh, if they didn't go with that... Yeah, and you play the if rest they of the didn't set like that, They're gonna yeah. hate this. They're never gonna go with the rest of the stuff. Oh no, panic! Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, but exciting nervousness, is it? Yeah, yeah. It is exciting. Yeah, yeah. I uh, no, it is exciting. I mean, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah. Well, that panic, and then walk off. Spoke. Yeah, but you know. And then everyone going, uh, all the Guardian writers like that, and the, all the journalists going. <laughs> Bryden's all right as Keith Barrett. He's actually a bit of a legend. However, when it comes to himself, it's clearly very limited. That's what's the worst that can happen. Ten minutes isn't enough. I mean, ten minutes is, 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 is nothing. It's actually billed on the, the poster as an evening with Rob Bryden, so ideally I, I'd be looking at over and above ten minutes. But it's, it's finding that material, you know, where, where, do you, uh, where do you find the material? I'm going to uh, meet some students at Pyle to talk to them, to get their views on humour and the Welsh and, um, and to steal their jokes, basically. I mean, if somebody comes out with a good joke, I, I, I will have it. You could argue that we are a bit of a joke in the British Isles. What's more of a joke, Scotland or Wales? Well, Wales will win that. We're more of a joke than Scotland. Are we more of a joke than England? Definitely. We're more of a joke than Ireland.
Probably are, yeah, we are. We're often the party. So Stephen Fry did a thing once where he said, there's something inherently funny about saying the Welsh. He said you can say, da-dum, da-dum, the Welsh. <laughs> I know, but, you know, it's Stephen Fry, it must be right. People think of, like, when in Good Morning, they think of Wales as quite common. Sometimes, like, like commoners, do you know what I mean? Well, like, people think, think of the Welsh people as quite common. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, um, <laughs> like, they're all... Like, if you go somewhere else, they're like, oh, they're all miners and things like that. Well, I think they're the Welsh people all a bit like that, a bit <laughs> stupid, <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, I, I do stuff like that. See, in my act, I, I do a character who sort of talks like this, where I say, you know, you could never have a Welsh Spider-Man, cos he'd be like, all right, Peter Parker, my name is. Sorry I'm late. I've been down the laboratory. <laughs> well, super drug it was. <laughs> I've been bitten by a, by a spider. It was only getting radioactive. <laughs> it's turned my life around. I'm shooting webs, climbing up walls, swinging around buildings. Rightly or wrongly, the only downside of being imbued with the powers of a spider is I am finding it very difficult getting out of the bath. <laughs> I think the Welsh have an immense capacity for self-deprecation, but I'm not sure it amounts to laughing at themselves very much. However, I think we often think the Welsh have no humour, and that's not true. I don't know, I think the number of jokes that are made about the Welsh, like in terms of shagging sheep or sort of, you know, being a bit strange in some ways, uh, are pretty much welcomed with open arms. I mean, most of the jokes about sheep have been made by Welsh people, haven't they, I think? The Welsh are particularly have have very little sense of humour about themselves. Very funny people in a lot of ways. Absolutely not about being Welsh. See, I notice you now, this demeanour of you, you know, you're man, famous for being incredibly funny. You're being incredibly serious now about Wales. Well, I have to, because <laughs> I'm consorting with the enemy <laughs> at the moment, and <laughs> I'm fighting any inclination to agree with anything you say. <laughs> I think to play to a Welsh audience, there's nothing wrong about laughing at who the Welsh are, laughing at the way they take their nationality too seriously, laughing at the, the way the language is a sacrosanct topic. And it's only when we actually confront some of our demons and actually confront the fact that why are we so defensive about our nationality, why are we unwilling to have external people laugh at us, until we actually talk about those issues, then we will never move on. We shouldn't be pompous about it, you see. The fact that you're doing these jokes, you do comedy and you do Welsh comedy, which is, I mean, wonderfully funny. And people shouldn't be saying, well, I resent that remark. Because if you can't do, who the hell can? Girl, girl at the back. <laughs> well, in Wales, we've got the highest rate of teen pregnancy, the highest binge drinking, and we've got the highest... <laughs> and it's nothing to be proud of, no, though. No, it's nothing to be proud of. You don't hear it in America, you don't hear it in Ireland, but only in Wales. Why is that? Why is that country? definitely fact? We've definitely got the highest teenage pregnancies. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, some of you guys is putting it about. That is good. <laughs> People say we're a small country, but we're leading the way in many ways. <laughs> we're just the highest teenage pregnancies yes. of anywhere. You know, the country that likes to say yes. Yes! <laughs> yes! 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 I think it's because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> nothing else to do, man at the back there. Is, is that why you've contributed no, to these figures? No, that's... <laughs> no. I think it's plenty to do, I do. It's just there's lots of people hanging about on streets and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. But that's everywhere, I think. It's just we're more, you know, hands-on. <laughs> <laughs> we're more organised. We're more organised, yeah. I mean, what it is, they've got bins drinking and teenage pregnancies all over the UK. I will say, in Wales, we are more organised. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for that. That's great. And I'm going to use the material about bins drinking and teenage pregnancy, so thank you for that. And your line of, uh, that's going in, definitely. <laughs> My first gig is on Friday at the Glee Club in Cardiff. I've yes. never played there, you must have played there. Quite a lot. What's it like? Brilliant. Best club in the world. Welsh audiences, very giving, very uh, happy to play along, but at the same time kind of very respectful of the performers. So you don't get any kind of like nasty heckling. They're all very up for it. And uh, they love seeing a Welsh bloke on stage. I get a hot chocolate to take away. 
And what's he going to have? Coffee, please. Americano. My Welsh radar has never been more active because I know I've got to find material for these shows. Yes. So I'm constantly anything that comes to me. Obviously, I'm I'm jotting it down. And how's it going? Slowly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I suppose it depends on the response. I don't know if that's a good idea either, if it should depend on the response. So I think I'll probably do... Um, I don't know. I don't know. I want to see what happens. Take a chance. That's my intention. <laughs> see, in the back of my head, there's a voice going, oh, you'll just probably do Ronnie Corbett impressions. <laughs> so... I hope not. <laughs> oh, this, this is the worst feeling in the world. It's like a feeling like you just want to be somewhere else. Oh, I, oh. I've been sort of doing some, some, some new material and I want to try it out on you. Do you mind to have a bit of paper? You don't mind, do you? No, 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 no. We got the highest binge drinking in Europe. Come on. I was with a group of students the other day. I said, bloody hell, is that true? They said, yes. It's higher than anywhere else in the UK, in Wales. I said, why? How is it? He said, I don't know. We're just more hands-on. <laughs> and more teenage pregnancies. We get stuck in. <laughs> What's happened to Gavin Henson? Uh, I read that he was on a train. He got incredibly pissed. He insulted a lady passenger. He called her a fat bitch. There's, there's never any call for that. I mean, you can get that at home. Uh, he could... Um, He's... The next morning, he'll come in there. He'll see the big ones on the floor. He won't have a clue where they're from. There's no end to that story, but that is what happened. Any questions? <laughs> what? What? Any loud questions? Steve Moss. Who's Steve Moss? What? Needed Who needed therapy? Whoa. Oh dear. The main thing was, I think I came across as quite mean at times, and I was I was aware of that. Mm. Um, you know, what the Ely bit? Anybody from Ely? Yeah. Oh, it's a rough part, isn't it? Bloody hell, it's rough. Were you there? You're going to come out of this story really badly. That's quite a cynical, yeah. you know, way of, 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 of looking at things. Didn't seem to go quite so well. And sometimes I felt I was being very judgmental. Yeah. Most of the crew are English. And they'd never been to Ely before. <laughs> they'd been to a safari park. <laughs> things to learn from it yeah. that worked and you build on those and things that didn't work, so don't do those. And the only way you learn it is by doing it's it. Is by doing it, true. What of the Ponte Dowie, you mean? Ponte Dowie, yes, we got that to come. It's going to need work, I've got to work. Mm. And this is like being on Celebrity Fame Academy or something, this is dreadful. Well, that's very much a Welsh audience reaction, I think. You know, I want a minute. Whoa, whoa, now, what are you doing now? Are you having a go at us? That was like when I went on Jeremy Clarkson's uh, chat show years ago, doing Welsh material, oh, and my oh, best oh, friend switched oh, it off. Yeah. Which I couldn't believe. This is uh, this is David. Hello, everyone. Hello, David. Hi, Pete. Hi, you right? Right. Let's meet a Taff, shall we? I mean, at the time, it was like 
seen your best mate sell his soul to as well soul to sort of the, the arrogant middle class well, English, you know, Jerry Clark. Yeah, we, we don't have to we don't have to carry on. <laughs> if you've ever stayed in Wales, you should watch the, the Welsh version of Countdown. <laughs> 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 well, a great show. I mean, you'll have contestants on there. I'll have a consonant. <laughs> Another consonant. <laughs> consonant, please, Carol. <laughs> and a consonant. All L's. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't like it. I must be honest. I really... I don't like guys about the language. To a point, you know. Some of it is funny, but to a point, it's something that I, oh. I, I don't enjoy. Switched me off midway through my set. <laughs> when I, put find, the I on. can't see. I found that at the time. <laughs> and so did my brother and all the Your family. Yes, <laughs> yes, so did my yes. brother and all the family. I can understand why he switched it off. On the other hand, he's a bit of a pompous bastard, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> they have very thin skins in Wales about the idea that you could, in, even if you are Welsh, that's the opposite. With, when we talk about it being similar to the Jewish human, uh, I mean, Jewish people mock themselves yeah, continually, yes, but the Welsh yeah. do not like uh, to be mocked. They want to be, they want to be reassured. Well, I'm very fond of the story that the first Welshman said to God, how very kind you've been, you've given us this beautiful land, those wonderful mountains full of coal and iron and steel and, and uh, gold and slate. So why have you singled us out to be so fortunate? And God says, I haven't singled you out. You haven't seen your neighbours yet. I've always called it like the Braveheart syndrome. Wow. Feather England, a play in Wales, and that sort of Braveheart syndrome kicks in. Yeah. And it brings up the. But it's not just if they're the playing Wales. I'd understand if it's when they're playing Wales you want them to lose. But oh, you want you. England to lose with End. a violent passion. <laughs> they could be playing the Third Reich. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd want Hitler's boys to win, wouldn't you? I'm ashamed to say I would, yeah. One of the things I find slightly depressing is the Welsh hatred of the English. It's not just a sort of um, a mild Ill intolerance, it's an actual hatred. Maybe we should feel that way about them. Wales was oppressed. Yes, but when, Rob? When was it oppressed? Centuries ago. See, I feel... I, I'm wholly Welsh, but I was brought up in England, so I can't share any culture's aspirations to base it on just disliking or hating another group of people. I mean, I associate there is a sort of Welsh way of getting angry, which is, which is thumbs in waistcoat pockets, and it's drawing yourself up to your full five foot seven. <laughs> That's how tall I am. <laughs> <laughs> and, going, and then using every long word you know, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's very how green was my valley. I mean, it's, it, and it's very intellectually um, chippy. A.A. A. Gill, <laughs> the, the celebrated critic, <laughs> he doesn't like us. I'm almost sure he said that, um, uh, and I, forgive me, Mr. Gill, if I quote you wrong, but I think you said that in their glove-shaped valleys, the Welsh have spawned a life grimmer than that of any rock pool. It's pretty damning, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a, it's a good, and I love, I love club ship valleys. Well, see, he is a good writer. That's the problem. Mm. It's just what he writes. Yeah, but yeah. he is a good. Yeah, but he writes, he writes for effect. So you don't think he, you don't think he means it, or no. you? Do... No. Um, yeah, I did, I did mean it. No, I mean just, I meant, yeah, I meant it. Ah, but in his heart, he doesn't. You can say anything. Words are easily spoken. What's in his heart comes. Max, I meant it. I kind of agree with him, you see, on the, you know, this glove-shaped valley thing. Because when I think of my friends and I think which ones are the gloomy ones and, and which ones are not, the gloomy ones will be the Welsh ones, you know. Well, I think, see, I think we are a bit of a contradiction because we are also intrinsically optimistic as well as being... I think our benchmark is bleakness. Yeah, and a, a bit dour. Setting, yeah. Default setting yeah. is a bit bleak. Yeah. For comedy, I've sort of dwelt on the, the, the gloom aspect. But I do see it, seriously, as a characteristic of the Welsh. Why? Yeah. Living next to England, I suppose. 
and some inherent racism as well. Then. <laughs> why, why is there that? Why is it? But it's, it's a romantic gloom, isn't it? It's, it's a sort of drama queen gloom. It's not misery. It's a sort of. Well, I, I think it's. I think it's dramatic. Yeah, we revel in it. We enjoy it. We yes. relish the pain. My mother always wants to talk about death. When I go home, the first thing she says is, "Oh, you'll never guess who's died." And she likes looking through, you know, um, in the newspaper also, and who's died. So yeah. I think the idea that people relish suffering. I remember the story of a great aunt of mine complaining that when she opened the coffin to show her dead husband to neighbours, the coffin hinges squeaked. And she went to put oil on them, and then she realised, well, I'm not going to do this for more than another day, so why bother? I took the oil back and demanded the money. That's a very well story too, I think. And what about the one about the, the husband who's going to die and, and says, uh, I, uh, she goes, oh, not long now, Gwen. He says, no. Is there anything you'd like? I'd love some salmon. You'd like some salmon? I'd love some fresh salmon. And she says, all right. And she goes away and comes back and spoons. And he goes, oh. He goes, but that's not salmon, is it? He goes, that's tuna. And she says, yes, we're keeping the salmon for the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> My dad goes to funerals of people I don't think he actually knows very well. <laughs> That's quite a Welsh thing, isn't it? Yeah. I do think there's that sort of, oh, well, I could have seen that coming, couldn't you? We were foolish to get our hopes up. I don't know what to say about that. What's the point? You put me in a gloomy mood now. Well, we're both a bit gloomy. I there's know. a lot to be gloomy about if you look around there the world. Is, yeah. What's the point? Do you ever think that? Yeah, yeah. quite often. Quite often, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you sort of glimpse the futility of life? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you feel, what's the bloody point? Yeah. Yeah? Or young, you probably say, what's the fucking point? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, cock. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when, if you tolerate this, went to number one and it was, we'd beat steps to get to number one oh, and it was just a joy. Fair play. <laughs> a joyous occasion. And within. <laughs> But within 20 minutes, we were all on the bus, and you could just feel it coming over us. Seriously? You could just, the three of us, you know, wait, what do we do next? Oh, it didn't... It sold 20,000 less than we thought it would, or, you know... It just... It's just inbuilt in us. Is there a word for enjoy in, in the language? We won't allow a word for enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> we, we thought of having a word for enjoy, Adrian, but in the end, we thought, well, how often are we going to use it? <laughs> exactly. There is a certain pessimism that came, I think, from Puritanism, which was a great backbone to people under serious difficulties and poverty, but on the other hand does make for a certain dourness. You do see some of the gloomy Welsh, but I've only seen them on television by TV companies, I suppose. Is what this is what I'm doing. Oh, OK, right, right, <laughs> OK. Give it that easy. <laughs> But, you know, you said, hey, man, if we knew, you know, you see that sort of character being portrayed over and over again. I don't know why. But it has no root in reality. It's absolutely no root in any reality I know. But there was no part of you then, in, during your incarceration, that, that gave in to that Welsh gloominess, which I still insist exists. exists. No, I mean, I'm not being deliberately perverse here, but I, I'm really not sure what you mean about the Welsh gloominess. Well, yeah, but you must, all right, not in you, but you must be aware of, of a, of a preconcept or, or, or a, um, an impression of, of Wales as being a rather gloomy nation. Are you not even aware of that? No. Seriously? Seriously, yeah. As I say, I'm not being deliberately perverse. So I'm surprised that this is the result of your research. This is interesting, because I would have characterised this as just gloomy, right? Mm. But lots of people are saying what you're saying, we're gloomy, but we love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the thing, yeah. Rather well, than just being miserable, it's miserable, and you secretly inside you have a good time being miserable. That's the pleasure. Happy of it. to be sad. Yeah. Chapel communities have lost their grip on on Wales, so as a consequence, it has almost created a gap where other things can can move in, like television, possibly like humour. Politics, to some extent, has moved into that gap as well, and all of those components really make for a, a, a greater confidence. How would you describe the Welsh people? Um, friendly, open, easy to get along with. Very good. Yeah? Very good. Quiet. Nice. Fun people. Yeah. Happy people. Outgoing people. 
I got an email. Well, you're, you're on a roll now. I don't want to stop you. Huh? Your character in Gavin Stacey, though, is a good... Uncle Ren. Ren. But... Mickey, you're a lovely-looking boy. Look at him. He's Nothing a genuinely most. nice man, isn't yes, he? He's trying is. to do the best in the yes. world. Yes, he is. I'm having a wheel of a time. The kind of decent man who's a bit lost, you know, but is trying to do his best. Well, that's me, time. basically. Yeah. <laughs> that's just that's me. all. But, you know, that is... I, I think that's more positive. It seems like I've been very, very wrong, doesn't it? Because all I'm getting now is, no, oh, no, we're not miserable, we're not gloomy. All the things that I thought, you know, I was taking for granted as this is how it is, it seems uh, uh, not the case. Um, it seems like, you know, that the, the country's changed, which is lovely, that, that's great, well done. On the downside, I've got to play to about 200 people in Pontadawi, from my point of view, it's, you know, it's actually bad news. So, what are we doing here then, Bob? Uh, well, we've come here because I think that I think I've been quite negative about Wales. OK. So I wanted to come to somewhere positive because I, I'm starting to think that I've got it wrong. In what sense? Well, in the sense I've sort of, I've sort of come to this with my very sort of... You know, like a lot of my comedy is quite dark and sort of, you know, like that. I think I've come to it with, with, with that sort of attitude. And, and the people that I'm meeting and I'm interviewing, so many of them are going... Oh, I don't know what are you talking about? So they're not recognising what your perception yeah. was going into it, yeah. which was a bit dour. It, it, well, no, it wasn't dour. Pessimistic, right. depressive. And the more time I'm spending here, I have to say, the less I'm feeling that. So are you coming around to thinking that you might do more positive stuff then with this gig coming up? Well, so I, I want to, yeah. Like so that. what I'm going to do is smile a bit more, I'm yeah. going to be a bit friendlier, and I'm going to be wary of making the Welsh character in my jokes the victim. Yeah. Or, or the, the butt of the joke, every time. I should sort of change, we couldn't have a Welsh rapper, to, we've got everything, we've got Welsh rappers, to make it positive. I'd be interested in doing that almost like, as like an ex, just yeah, an experiment. Yeah, it's experiment, definitely. One of those great country, angry. we've got this, we've got that. Yeah. We, we, we've even got serial killers. Yeah. Well, yeah, there are Welsh. I don't know if there have been. Does it really matter, does it? There must have been a Welsh serial killer by now. Yeah. Surely we're not lagging that far behind the rest of Britain. Yes. Who <laughs> won? <laughs> there you go. The Mavericks are in. <laughs> what I'd like to do is present someone. Mr. Rob Ryder. <laughs> Pontedowie Arts Centre. It's lovely, lovely, lovely to be here this evening. How are you? You're lovely. <laughs> I'm feeling lovely. It's a lovely building. If you had to find a word to sum up the evening, it would be fantastic. <laughs> what a fantastic country we are. What wonderful people we are. We are world leaders. We have everything that the rest of Britain has. There's nothing they've got that we don't have. Serial killers? We got serial killers? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. The first time was an accident. <laughs> I fell on her. After that, I just got a taste for it, to be honest with you. <laughs> the best pilots are Welsh pilots. Air Wales. <laughs> Ding dong. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I'm not being funny. I ain't got a clue what I'm doing. It's just buttons and lights and switches. But you know what? I'm gonna have a go! <laughs> I'm gonna 
country! Come on! I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? I, I recently um, was, was have to be driven. I'd done a show in Birmingham, and I got driven back to London, which is where I live, I'm sorry. Um, I, what can I do? Um, uh, move, yeah? <laughs> You are going to have to stop this <laughs> because it's hard for me to remember my act with an erection. <laughs> like what you were saying to me, man, it is like turning me on, you know? I don't know, what was I saying? What were we talking about? What was I saying? What? London, yeah, so I was being driven back. I was being driven from, from Birmingham to, to, to London. It was late, I was tired, I wanted to go home. And uh, we get in and he tries to find... Now he's got sat-nav on, OK? The sat-nav said, bear left, bear left. He looked at the sat-nav and he said, aye, then what? <laughs> I think he should have a Welsh sat-nav. I think a Welsh sat-nav would be fantastic. Take the next left. <laughs> Coming up now, pretty soon, get ready for it. <laughs> Watch out for that joker there. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you almost up your ass. look out! <laughs> been a lovely audience, Pondidawi. Thank you very much indeed. Good night. That was, uh, that was much better from my point of view. I felt a big difference in terms of the, um, the kind of atmosphere with, with being positive and uh, putting an upbeat thing in it. Because, I, you know, it's essentially the same material. Well, it was, it was the same material, but just with a different attitude, you know, coming from a different place. And I thought it, uh, I didn't feel bad about doing it. When I was on stage at the Glee Club, I felt, yeah, especially when I watched it, when I saw it. You know, I really felt that. Howard Marks is good. Mm. Howard Marks is funny. And I have a gag about you, you know, you, you being in jail, which yeah. is so removed from the truth, but I would say, you know, I'm Howard Marks, you know, I'm, a, I'm in jail, things couldn't get any worse, you know, and you go up to the bars, you go, oh, bloody hell, it's raining. <laughs> you know, bloody typical, it would have to be raining, wouldn't it, you know? Which, of course, I, probably was not how you were at all. <laughs> at all, it wasn't. <laughs> No, there we are. I'm still going to try the gag and, no, see, no, and see how it goes, you know. I met Howard Marks the other day. How did he cope with seven years of jail? Hey, I don't, think, I don't think we Welsh, I don't think we would cope with jail. I don't think there should be a law that we can never go to jail. We should just pay fines. As I was doing it, I was going, oh, God, this is going to get nothing. Yeah. I was, as I, was th I was thinking that as I was doing it. I always got a very deep voice like that, you know. You can imagine going to the cell and going, Oh, good God, seven years for smuggling dope. I don't believe it. I got to the end and you got this laugh and I, and I thought, oh, great. Oh, well. Yeah, that was good. Harness raining and all, bloody tip. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to sue me for misrepresentation. Definitely not. Definitely You're standing not, at the back of the club. <laughs> I did not say that. I said how well made the cell was. The bars were very uniform and straight. <laughs> it was bloody wonderful. It, it makes such sense now that, that if I am stood there, constantly berating the Welsh things, then naturally people can go, at one point, they're going to go, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah. You know, I'd sort of, it foolishly hadn't occurred to me that that, that, that might be the reaction. Uh, you can still do the gag, just come at it from a different angle. Inclusively you know? and yeah. happily and positively. Mm. I expected it to be different because I went into it with a different, I mean, a very different attitude. I was really determined to um, be more positive. You know, to not do what I did at the Glee, which was to be quite hard on, on on the Welsh. So I wanted to put a positive spin on things, and it felt really good being on stage with a different attitude, with with a, with a more positive approach. And it shows what you can do if you just change the 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 attitude to it. You can sort of say anything, really. Roll on up a dead, eh? Mm. So now we've got, like, the final show, Aberdeer. And after that one, 
I mean, after after how Pontedawi went, I sort of feel now with Aberdeer that I can. I can have a go at um, the language, which is the big thing. You know, the, oh, you must make jokes about the language. You cannot make jokes about the language. You know, I feel like I want to go along and do something to give David a heart attack. I grew up when there was no S4C. Yeah. There, was, there were Welsh programmes on... Uh, what was English language Welsh yeah, television, yeah, yeah. and that turned me against it mm. on the very simple <laughs> level that as a, a young boy I was missing out on Star Trek because you, you'd, <laughs> yeah. you'd get to Star Trek and we wouldn't get it in Wales. Yeah, we'd yeah. get the Welsh news. Yeah. So I would associate it with a feeling of resentment and yeah. Anger. And I'd be wanting to see Captain Kirk, and I'd be hearing, uh, yeah. and I wouldn't know where they are. Yeah, yeah, and the, yeah, that's you just, true. That sort of, now I, now when <laughs> yeah. I hear the Welsh language, it sounds lyrical. <laughs> yeah. I went to this uh, this concert or gig last night. Super Fairy Animals are there. They're around the tea making machine. And yeah. Like, yeah, 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 wicked, wicked. And all of a sudden, they start talking in Welsh about how many, you know, sugars they want in their yeah. tea. Yeah. You think they're having a secret conversation about you? They're not. They're just talking no, about sugars. Yeah. I feel ripped off that we weren't language. involved. In but it, it's, it's an odd thing, isn't it? This, this is your country. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and you have, I can't really... understand what they're saying. When I was arriving a while back, and I'm just coming over the, uh, uh, the Seven Bridge, yeah. and we all know that you pay to get in and you don't have to pay to leave. And we're coming in, and I'm arriving at the Seven Bridge, and I said to my wife, in all seriousness, I said, I wonder what that means. She said, What? I said, A bit of Welsh up there. You see, I, what, how do you pronounce that? M A N N E D. Manith. Maneth. <laughs> Mand. Mand. It was a manned toll booth. Yes, but the reason you're like that is because you allowed the English to come in and stop you, or stop your, your ancestors from learning Welsh yeah. as a first language. Yeah. And so, therefore, English kind of took over and you lost your language. Yeah, well, exactly, and I, that's why I'm not as clear-cut as I used to be. Mm. And now I'm, I, I'm questioning a lot of my... Beliefs. I do like the language, and uh, particularly all the different little towns and villages across Wales, all, all, the, all the Welsh place names. And uh, it's very important, of course, for me to uh, pronounce them correctly when I'm doing the weather, otherwise, you know, people complain. One of the first things I ever did was uh, present uh, a panel show on, on BBC Wales. Welcome to Invasion, another edition in which two teams will be trekking through Wales, conquering counties as they go. I used to have terrible trouble with all the place names. <laughs> It wasn't part of my upbringing. I had to be able to pronounce Swansea, Neath, Port Talbot. And there's a floor manager who I'm sure didn't like me. And he keeps... You can see him on these outtakes. He comes up to me and he's saying, uh, Rob, it's uh, Glinda Rudry. Glinda Rudry. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, well, exactly. And I'm going, OK, so... I think you're saying us. it wrong. Is it Glinda Rudry? How, how, how do you pronounce it? Glinda Rudry. Glyn Dover Doy. Yeah, if you do it in two sections, Glyn Dover Doy. Right, so there we are. So, so, I, so I still haven't improved. It's what is Glyn Dover Doy? Glyn Dover Doy. Which famous Welsh man was born at Glyn Dover No, wrong. I think it's Glyn Dover Doy. Glyn Dover Doy. I think the R is silent. Dover right. So it's Glyn Dover Doy. But I've said it wrong on radio once and somebody rang in to complain. Which famous Welsh man was born in Glyn Dover the point is, in terms of how you feel about your country, is that at that time, I was getting cheesed off with this floor manager. Which famous <laughs> word? Faster than that? Uh, yeah, the question can, but take, take the word. Which famous Welshman was born in Glyn de Vrydoy? Th I'm thinking, why is this, what's this such a big deal? I'm trying to do it right. But now, as I get older, I'm thinking, no, he was right. Of course you should say these things properly. Glyn de Vrydoy. Dover Dwee. Dover Dwee. Okay. okay. <clears throat> right, we're ready now. Okay, once again. And you should be able to pronounce them. Which famous Welshman was born in Glyn Dover Dwee? That's it. Did it! I think that Welsh people are often overly dramatic in their use of language. Yeah, well, it's a, but it's a dramatic tone of speaking as well you know and this thing of like well this this is what comes I imagine from having part your own language and then part having to accept its failure to have caught on so which is the only <laughs> way I can, failure to have well, caught the only, on that's the only way I can describe it the language has failed to catch on hasn't it 
Well, it has, hasn't it? There's no other way of putting well, where it. Where do you want it to catch? I mean, people of Denmark, we don't speak Danish in England, but you don't say all oh, that. Yeah, that, but that, you that. don't go to Denmark and the signs are printed in Danish and English, and people no, they're talk... not that polite, are they? In this country, at least we no. have the trouble right. of putting them in English. Okay, okay. Are you? Okay, here's the problem. Do you? Are you fluent Welsh? No. Is Ruth fluent Welsh? Well, like, no. she says no, but I think she's pretty she's good. She's not. Well, she's not, and right. she never uses it. Yeah. I've yet to meet a Frenchman who isn't fluent in <laughs> French, right? It, like, just face it, it's a fact. The language hasn't caught on. My father and mother were both Welsh-speaking, but my mother wouldn't speak Welsh to me because she perceived it to be um, the language of the poor. My mother had to have card wall around her neck it, when she, the kids when they spoke Welsh because they had to wipe it out because the English owned... They were the boss. They eat the bosses. They had to put the notice up saying, you will come to work at wherever time you go. I mean, uh, so they had to have English yeah. in order to, to work with these people. But at the same time, um, I'm not fervent about it, you see. I love it deeply. I mean, I could fuck it, it's so beautiful, and I, I applaud it. I stroke it, I caress it, I love it. But I'm not going to do this for it. The position regarding the Welsh language has come full circle. Whereas it used to be seen that Welsh held you back, today Welsh is regarded as opening doors for you. It's taught compulsorily in schools and people are very strongly behind that. They feel that speaking Welsh opens doors in the public sector, in the media, in education. So it's seen as having some real social status for, um, attached to it and people associated it in particular with a mobile middle class who's trying to get their kids to go on. Just over a hundred years ago there was an, an awful lot of evidence like where in that Welsh knot that the kids had to in school, you know. I don't know about this. Oh, there's something called a Welsh knot, which is a lump of wood, OK? Uh, and, you know, it was, if anyone spoke a Welsh then he was given one of these and ended up with a Welsh knot, yeah. at the end of the day you were punished in some sort of way. The Welsh knot is shrouded in myth. It's taken on a status where people assume it was responsible for the crushing of the Welsh language. It's actually far more complicated than that. It was never very widely used. It, it was only based in certain parts of Wales, and it was Welsh teachers who were implementing it. Certainly once education becomes compulsory at the end of the 19th century, it was never, ever an official policy. So people associate it as one of the reasons for why the Welsh language declined, but it certainly wasn't the policy of some evil English government trying to stamp out the Welsh language. In men's school, if they speak English, you know, they, they got a mark on the, on the wall and the board, you know, and they got a smiling face if they haven't spoken English all day. <laughs> well, that's true. It's true. Absolutely You true. get a smiling face if well, you've got... Yeah, I mean, it's like a star. When we were in school in our days, you get a star for doing something good, and if you've spoken English... I mean, the, 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 you know, the concept of the school is a Welsh-speaking school, you know? Yeah. People are saying that because of <clears throat> the, the, having the road signs in two languages, it has helped a resurgence of the language, which you would there say, has helped to keep the Welsh culture distinct. Has, uh, it, has it helped with traffic accidents? Well, you say people go in, what the hell? Do, oh, shit, look out. That's probably happened, much to the delight of stand-up comedians everywhere. But there's no difference between the Welsh and the English, and it's by having these road signs, for example, that, and, and, and that there's S4C. I'm sorry, if you've got to, if you've got to go and have, um, you know, a, a sign painter go around the country saying, this is just to remind you that you're actually Welsh, then you probably already lost the fight. I think the struggle to maintain and develop the Welsh language and to keep that distinctiveness has sometimes made people overprotective. And I think that sensitivity is something we do have to address because at the end of the day, a country that can show it can stand up to any kind of joke, any kind of criticism, is a very mature country. And I'm confident Wales can do that. I think with the Welsh language with me, it's almost like a no-go area. Like, like you were saying last week, it's a no-go area, you know? I'm yeah. so passionate about the Welsh language and its, uh, its existence and its development. That, so any so laughter about it is just Any laughter not is not Really? <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, not that far, but I mean, I don't, you know, I don't enjoy it. I, I no, but you are saying that. It. It. But you are, though, because you're saying, well, you, cause then you mm. are not that far, but it is that far for you, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So don't do it again. See, I didn't grow up immersed in Welsh culture, Welsh language culture, I mean, it was always there, but I, I never really looked at it. It's like being reminded of something that's in your peripheral vision that you never really looked at. Well, now I'm, I'm, I'm wishing I had. You 
I started this, I, I you know, well, both of us, our, our take was that we're this dramatic, slightly gloomy nation. You mm. go with that? Yeah, All I right. think so, yeah, yeah. Well, nine out of ten of the interviews I've been doing, <laughs> nobody agrees. <laughs> and I have been oh, made no. to look like a gloom monger. <laughs> and I seriously spoken to lots of people, and they kind of go, I know, I, I, I don't, I don't recognise. I think we're very self-deprecating. We look on the positive side of things. <laughs> we're we're really? passionate, yeah. yeah. All right, Rob. Good man. I've not found what I thought I was going to find on this. Oh no! So yeah. Has that ruined the whole program? No, it's, I think hopefully it's, it's made it more interesting. But it's it's been strange for me. I've also found myself becoming far more patriotic and becoming quite, because I've spent much more time in Wales, I've been going to different parts of Wales, I've been playing to different crowds, and I'm actually feeling quite, uh, you know... A camera? Uh, yeah, I am, yeah. <laughs> might surprise you, but I love Wales as well. And I'm very proud of being Welsh, but just in a different way to you. Can I believe you? Thousands of them. I feel about I'm you. good. I'm looking forward to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's always that feeling, don't you get, before before you go on, where you think, is this going to be the disastrous one? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like this has been absolutely life-changing for you. It's been re it's been much bigger than I thought it would be, yeah. Has it? It's put, me, it's put me back in touch. It's made me feel much more Welsh and proud of being Welsh. Has it? Yes. So it's yeah. really um, made you look at your identity then? Yeah. Well, it makes, yeah, it makes you examine what you take for granted. What a lovely welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And it is, if I may say, a beautiful audience. It is a very aesthetically pleasing audience. For me, I get to look and see uh, some real, real stunners. <laughs> well, I suppose shocking more than stunning. <laughs> All right, upsetting. Um, we're making a documentary, and it's all about being Welsh. <laughs> we're not a healthy nation, are we? <laughs> it's all across my shoulders. It's down my arm. My left hand is a permanent claw. Oh, this damp, you see, it's very damp. I shouldn't have come out tonight, really. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, just on cue. <laughs> so I'm making this documentary called Rob Brydon's Identity Crisis, all about Wales and Welshness and what it is to be Welsh. Because it's, it's not easy, is it? <gasps> no, thank you. Think of tonight as a sort of pantomime for grown-ups. <laughs> I, th I think we have it very hard. We're not, how can I put it? We're not as suave as the English. When I said, think of it as a pantomime... <laughs> no, I would say... I would say, generally, we're not as... We're not as suave as the English... Generally. You think the way the English say hello to each other. It's very posh. Hello. <laughs> oh, I say, hello. We don't say hello like that, do we? We say hello like this. <laughs> All right. But we're not, we're generally we're not as suave as the English, and we're not as fierce as the Scots. Very fierce people. You can take our land, but you'll never take our freedom. <laughs> we're not like that. You can take our land.
Don't forget our freedom now before you go. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Oh, they were a lovely invading country, weren't they? Yes, there's, there's a side of us of being Welsh that is relaxed, it's chilled out. We don't get too worked up about things, do we? You know, look, look at Jonathan Davis. The great Jonathan Davis, the great rugby player. I love it when you see him giving the half-time analysis. Now, say England-Wales are playing. It's at Twickenham. We go for the analysis at half-time. So, we'll start off with some English player, probably called Rory something. <laughs> Rory undergraduate, something like that. <laughs> so, uh, Rory, it's been, uh, it's been quite a good uh, first half for England there. They've got a 300-point lead. Um, <laughs> How do you think they're playing? Yes, I think that uh, our chat's been playing rather well. There's a lot of good play going on. The forwards gathering the ball, <laughs> giving a lot of support <laughs> back to the backs. So I think if we sort of keep this thing... I mean, I've played a lot of them at university. Some of those buggers are absolutely bloody great fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're on course for a victory. All right, well, uh, Jonathan Davis, uh, what do you think? Ah, <laughs> oh, we're just happy to be here, really. the way we are. We, we look for the best in everything. <laughs> I don't speak Welsh. I wish I could. Who can speak Welsh here? Hey. Well, just going, oh, uh, is not Welsh. <laughs> I would love to speak it because I'd love to be one of those men who says something in English and then says it again in Welsh. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Coliseum at Aberdeer for an evening of comedy. Croesium in Divarigid and Outliger, Aberdeer Coliseum, comedy at evening a laughter. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, as I came here this evening, a thought occurred to me. Got a mighty gid in Nar, I got my automobile at Thinkyoidith. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everyone in the world could live as one? Thinking fantastic in our. I got my plant a plant in a game pell droid are happy. <laughs> but then I thought to myself, no, got a min na. <laughs> it could never be, be never even he could. <laughs> if, I could, if I could speak Welsh, I'd use my powers for bad things. I'd go to nightclubs, I'd find non Welsh speaking girls and chat them up in Welsh. Oh, she may be in our va. I got my panty eye droppy, gee, va. I got my shaggy eye incessant. Oh, oh, I got my guy precautions dim. Be back, Ivy. Oh, I do, I do, I do. Do any of you, a lot of people do now, they don't speak Welsh, but their kids are learning it in school. Any of you send your kids to, to Welsh language schools? One. <laughs> and her husband then put, her hand, put his hand up in support at the last minute. <laughs> don't, don't hit her about it. <laughs> you bloody fool, why have you drawn attention to us? I told you about this at home, I've hit you many times about it. Don't make me slap you again. <laughs> Domestic abuse is a terrible thing, ladies and gentlemen, and we've stumbled upon it here in Aberdeer tonight. <laughs> A man wearing a billabong sweatshirt. You're too old for it. <laughs> How old are you? 38, you can't wear surfing sweatshirts, you idiot. Those days are gone. Are you, are you a surfer? No, then you shouldn't be wearing it. <laughs> so your kids are going to Welsh language schools, but you don't speak Welsh. Oh, wow. And how, are they fluent now? Brilliant. Fantastic, because it means that you're more able then to learn other languages as well, doesn't it? Because it gets that part of the brain going. <laughs> They're probably at home now on Welsh chat lines. <laughs> got a vin, got a vi, got a vo. Um, <laughs> Shumai sexy, call the iron now, at a got a min, got a vo. <laughs> but how do you know what they're saying to you? <laughs> you can say, Go to your room, because I'm about to hit your mother. So go to your room. 
I'm going to give a right bloody belting. <laughs> go to your room. And they can go off going, Oh, Tequin Valley, Tequin Giri, now they're flaggy idea. And you've no idea whether they're saying, Fair enough, Dad, you're a figure of authority that we respect. <laughs> or, Bugger off, you're too old to be a surfer, you look an idiot. <laughs> There's no way of you knowing, is there? Thank you, good night! so much Welsh language if I made That's what I thought it was tonight. just for me, I think. Yeah, it was, yeah. I thought yeah. so. I, thought. I, was, I was doing them with more of a, a warmth, I felt, than usual. Did you think that? No, not really. Do no. you really not? Really, really? You still find that...? No, yeah, it was excellent. Did laugh, did smile, but I can't say I, uh, I was roaring with laughter at it. Anyway. At the, the rest of it, fantastic, yeah, but, but just, not, not that. Right. Did I. You're still sensitive about that. Still found it difficult to, to smile at that. But on the whole, though... Excellent, I mean, given fantastic. that you didn't have to pay for your ticket, <laughs> what more can I say? Yeah. Fantastic. Exactly. Mr. Rob Brydon, well done. Thank I you very much. I thought that went very well. How did you feel I like it, it went? Fantastic. Yeah, it was brilliant. And doing new stuff, like all the Welsh language stuff, was I'd, I'd had a little notion that it would be quite funny to do stuff about being able to speak Welsh. And, you know, this whole thing of putting the positive slant on stuff. Yeah. So I came up with the idea of saying, because I would, I'd love to be able to speak Welsh, yeah. and I genuinely would. So saying that then gives me then the opportunity to do the, the Welsh language stuff, which went down a storm. Yeah, you know, whether you support it or don't, or take an issue with it, or don't like David, you know, <laughs> with the Welsh language thing. You're it's... never going to please everybody, but I looked out there and I saw great laughs coming from it. So the show's called Rob Brydon's Identity Crisis. Have you still got one? No, I don't think I have, really. Um... <laughs> Well, I was saying on stage to the audience that I am undoubtedly feeling much more Welsh, much more proud of it, and feeling, yeah, that's my identity. That's kind of who I am. And I think moving, I'm getting... <laughs> yeah. But moving away for so long, you lose sight of it. You don't realise. And I'd sort of forgotten that was in me. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's reminded me of that's me. It, it's been... Um, really has been... Uh, surprisingly revelatory for me. It really has. It's brought a smile to your face, isn't it? It's brought you yeah, a smile really from has, your yeah, soul. Yeah, 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 it does. This is who I am. Yeah, this yeah. is my country. Yeah. So it's been... I, I didn't expect that. I really didn't expect that <laughs> at all. And that's been lovely. Well, on behalf of the Welsh nation, welcome home. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Do I still have to pay at the bridge? Yeah. There's more Rob Brydon and Gavin and Stacey. The whole first series is being played tomorrow night from half past nine over on BBC Two. Badly. That's quite a cynical, yeah, you know, way of of of, of looking at things. Didn't seem to go quite so well. And sometimes I felt I was being very judgmental. Yeah. Most of the crew are English, and they'd never been to Ely before. <laughs> they'd been to a safari park. <laughs> There's things to learn from it yeah. that worked, and you build on those, and things that didn't work, so don't do those. And the only way you learn it is by doing it's it. Is by doing it, true. What of the Pontadawi, you mean? Pontadawi, yes, we got that to come. It's gonna need work, I've got to work. Mm. And this is like being on Celebrity Fame Academy or something, this is dreadful. Well, that's very much a Welsh audience reaction, I think. You know, I want a minute. Whoa, whoa, now, what are you doing now? Are you having a go at us? That was like when I went on Jeremy Clarkson's uh, chat show years ago, doing Welsh material, and my best friend switched it off. Which I couldn't believe. This is uh, this is David. Hello, everyone. Hi, David. Hi, David. Hi, Pete. Hi. You right? right. Let's meet a Taff, shall we? I mean, at the time, it was like seeing your best mate sell his soul to his Welsh soul to sort of 
the, the arrogant middle class right. English, you know, Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah, we, we don't have to. We don't have to carry on. <laughs> if you've ever stayed in Wales, you should watch the the Welsh version of Countdown. <laughs> 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 It'll be a great show. I mean, you'll have contestants on there. I'll have a consonant. <laughs> Another consonant. <laughs> consonant, please, Carol. <laughs> and a consonant. All L's. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't like it. I must be honest. I really... I don't like guys about the language. To a point, you know. Some of it is funny, but to a point, it's something that I, oh. I, I don't enjoy. Switched me off midway through my set. <laughs> when I, put the find, I on. can't see. I found that at the time. <laughs> and so did my brother. And all Your brother. Yes. <laughs> yes. So did my brother and all the family. I can understand why he switched it off. On the other hand, he's a bit of a pompous bastard, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> they have very thin skins in Wales about the idea that you could, in, even if you are Welsh. That's the opposite. With when we talk about it being similar to the Jewish human, uh, I mean Jewish people mock themselves yeah, continually, yes, but the Welsh yeah. do not like uh, to be mocked. They want to be they want to be reassured. Well, I'm very fond of the story that the first Welshman said to God, "How very kind you've been, you've given us this beautiful land, those wonderful mountains full of coal and iron and steel and and uh, gold and slate. So why have you singled us out to be so fortunate?" And God says, "I haven't singled you out. You haven't seen your neighbours yet." I've always called it like the Braveheart syndrome. Wow. Feather England, a play in Wales, and that sort of Braveheart syndrome kicks in. Yeah. And it... I've always called it like the Braveheart syndrome. Wow. Feather England, a play in Wales, and that sort of Braveheart syndrome kicks in. Yeah. And it brings up the. But it's not just if they're the playing Wales. Syndrome. I'd understand if it's when they're playing Wales you want them to lose. But oh, you want people. England to lose. With Any a violent time. passion, <laughs> they could be playing the Third Reich. <laughs> and you'd want Hitler's boys to win, wouldn't you? I'm ashamed to say I would, yeah. One of the things I find slightly depressing is the Welsh hatred of the English. It's not just a sort of um, a mild Ill intolerance, it's an actual hatred. Maybe we should feel that way about them. Wales was oppressed. Yes, but when, Rob? When was it oppressed? Centuries ago. See, I feel... I. I'm wholly Welsh, but I was brought up in England, so I can't share any culture's aspirations to base it on just disliking or hating another group of people. I mean, I associate there is a sort of Welsh way of getting angry, which is, which is thumbs in waistcoat pockets, and it's drawing yourself up to your full five foot seven. <laughs> That's how tall I am. <laughs> And going, and then using every long word you know. It's you know it it it's it's very how green was my valley. I mean it's it and it's very intellectually um, chippy. A. A. Gill, <laughs> the the celebrated critic, <laughs> he doesn't like us. I'm almost sure he said that. Um, uh, and I forgive me, Mr. Gill, if I quote you wrong, but I think you said that in the glove-shaped valleys. The Welsh have spawned a life grimmer than that of any rock pool. <laughs> it's pretty damning, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a, it's a great... And I love, I love glove-ship valleys. Well, see, he is a good writer. That's the problem. Mm. It's just what he writes. Yeah, but yeah. he is a good... Yeah, but he writes, he writes for effect. So you don't think he... You don't think he means it? Or no. You do... No. Um, yeah, I did, I did mean it. No, I mean, just, I meant, yeah, I meant it. I mean, in his heart, he doesn't. You can say anything. Words are easily spoken. What's in his heart comes. Max, I meant it. I kind of agree with him, you see, on the, you know, this glove-shaped valley thing. Because when I think of my friends and I think which ones are the gloomy ones and, and which ones are not, the gloomy ones will be the Welsh ones, you know? Well, I think, see, I think we are a bit of a contradiction because we are also intrinsically optimistic, as well as being... I think our benchmark is bleakness. Yeah, and a, a default bit dour. setting. Yeah. Default setting yeah. is a bit bleak, yeah. 
is the Welsh hatred of the English. It's not just a sort of um, a mild Ill intolerance, it's an actual hatred. Maybe we should feel that way about them. Wales was oppressed. Yes, but when, Rob? When was it oppressed? Centuries ago. See, I feel... I, I'm wholly Welsh, but I was brought up in England, so I can't share any culture's aspirations to base it on just disliking or hating another group of people. I mean, I associate there is a sort of Welsh way of getting angry, which is, which is thumbs in waistcoat pockets, and it's drawing yourself up to your full five foot seven. <laughs> That's how tall I am. <laughs> <laughs> and, going, and then using every long word you know. It's, you know, it, it, it's, it's very how green was my valley. I mean, it's, it, and it's very intellectually um, chippy. A.A. A. Gill, <laughs> the, the celebrated critic, <laughs> he doesn't like us. I'm almost sure he said that, um, uh, and I, forgive me, Mr. Gill, if I quote you wrong, but I think you said that in their glove-shaped valleys, the Welsh have spawned a life grimmer than that of any rock pool. It's pretty damning, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a, it's a good, and I love, I love glove ship valleys. Well, see, he is a good writer. That's the problem. Mm. It's just what he writes. Yeah, but yeah. he is a good. Yeah, but he writes, he writes for effect. So you don't think he, you don't think he means it, or no. you? Do... No. Um, yeah, I did, I did mean it. No, I mean just, <laughs> yeah, I meant it. I mean, in his heart, he doesn't. You can say anything. Words are easily spoken. What's in his heart comes. Max, I meant it. I kind of agree with him, you see, on the, you know, this glove-shaped valley thing. Because when I think of my friends and I think which ones are the gloomy ones and, and which ones are not, the gloomy ones will be the Welsh ones, you know. Well, I think, see, I think we are a bit of a contradiction because we are also intrinsically optimistic as well as being... I think our benchmark is bleakness. Yeah, and a, a default bit dour. Setting, yeah. Default setting yeah. is a bit bleak. Yeah. For comedy, I've sort of dwelt on the, the, the gloom aspect, but I do see it seriously as a characteristic of the Welsh. Why? Yeah, living next to England, I suppose. And some inherent racism as well, then. <laughs> Why is there that? Why is it? But so it's, it's a romantic gloom, isn't it? It's, it's a sort of drama queen gloom. It's not misery. It's a sort of. Well, I, I think it's. I think it's dramatic. Yeah, we revel in it. We enjoy it. We yes. relish the pain. My What's the name? <laughs> you're, you're on a roll now. I don't want to stop you. <laughs> Your character in Gavin Stacey, though, is a good Uncle Ben. Ben. Mickey, <laughs> you're a lovely looking boy. Look at him. He's Nothing a genuinely enough. nice man, isn't yes, he? Yes, trying he is. to do the best in the yes, world. Yes, he is. I'm having a wheel of a time. The kind of decent man who's a bit lost, you know, but is trying to do his best. Well, that's me, time. basically. Yeah. <laughs> that's just that's me. us all. But, you know, that is... I, I think that's more positive. It seems like I've been very, very wrong, doesn't it? Because all I'm getting now is, oh, no, we're not miserable, we're not gloomy. All the things that I thought... You know, I was taking for granted as this is how it is. It seems uh, uh, not the case. Um, it seems like, you know, that the, the country's changed, which is lovely, that's, that's great, well done. On the downside, I've got to play to about 200 people in Pontadawi. From my point of view, it's, you know, it's actually bad news. So, what are we doing here then, Bob? Uh, well, we've come here because I think that... <laughs> I think I've been quite negative about Wales. OK. So I wanted to come to somewhere positive, because I... I'm starting to think that I've got it wrong. In what sense? Well, in the sense I've sort of... I've sort of come to this with my very sort of... You know, like a lot of my comedy is quite dark and sort of, you know, like that. And I think I've come to it with, with, with that sort of attitude. And, and the people that I'm meeting and I'm interviewing, so many of them are going, 
Oh, what are you talking about? So they're not recognising what your perception yeah. was going into it? Yeah. Which was a bit dour? It, it, well, no, it wasn't dour. Pessimistic, right. depressive. And the more time I'm spending here, I have to say, the less I'm feeling that. So are you coming around to thinking that you might do more positive stuff then with this gig coming up? Well, so I, I want to, yeah. Like so that. what I'm going to do is smile a bit more, I'm yeah. going to be a bit friendlier, and I'm going to be wary of making the Welsh character in my jokes the victim. Yeah. Or, or the, the butt of the joke every time. I should sort of change. We couldn't have a Welsh rapper to... We've got everything. We've got Welsh rappers to make it positive. I'd be interested in doing that almost like, as like an ex, just yeah, an experiment. Yeah, it's experiment, definitely. One of those great country. Yeah. We've got this, we've got that. Yeah. We, we, we've even got serial killers. Yeah. Well, yeah, there are Welsh. I don't know if there have been. It doesn't really matter, does it? There must have been a Welsh serial killer by now. Yeah. Surely we're not lagging that far behind. Hello, Pontedawi Arts Centre. It's lovely, lovely, lovely to be here this evening. How are you? You're lovely. I'm feeling lovely. It's a lovely building. If you had to find a word to sum up the evening, it would be fantastic. What a fantastic country we are. What wonderful people we are. We are world leaders. We have everything that the rest of Britain has. There's nothing they've got that we don't have. Serial killers? We got serial killers? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. I'll be honest with you. The first time was an accident. <laughs> I fell on her. <laughs> After that, I just got a taste for it, to be honest with you. <laughs> the best pilots are Welsh pilots. Air whales. <laughs> Ding dong. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I'm not being funny. I ain't got a clue what I'm doing. It's just buttons and lights and switches. But you know what? I'm gonna have a go. I'm gonna try. Come on. What's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> I, I recently um, uh, was, was have to be driven. I'd done a show in Birmingham, and I got driven back to London, which is where I live. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I, what can I do? Um, uh, move, yeah. <laughs> You are going to have to stop this because it's hard for me to remember my act with an erection. <laughs> like what you were saying to me, man, it is like turning me on, you know? I don't know, what was I saying? What were we talking about? What was I saying? What? Like, yeah, so I was being driven back. I was being driven from, from Birmingham to, to, to London. It was late, I was tired, I wanted to go home. And uh, we get in and he tries to find... Now he's got sat-nav on, OK? The sat-nav said, bear left, bear left. He looked at the sat-nav and he said, aye, then what? <laughs> the ones will be the Welsh ones, you know. Well, I think, see, I think we are a bit of a contradiction because we are also intrinsically optimistic, as well as being... I think our benchmark is bleakness. Yeah, and a default bit dour. setting. Yeah. Default setting yeah. is a bit bleak, yeah. For comedy, I've sort of dwelt on the, the, the gloom aspect, but I do see it, seriously, as a characteristic of the Welsh. Why? Yeah, living next to England, I suppose. And it's inherent racism as well, then. <laughs> why, why is there that? Why is it... But so it's, it's a romantic gloom, isn't it? It's, it's a sort of drama queen gloom. It's not misery, it's a sort of... Well, I, I, think, it's, I think it's dramatic. Yeah, we revel in it, we enjoy it. We yes. relish the pain. 
My mother always wants to talk about death. When I go home, the first thing she says is, oh, you'll never guess who's died. And she likes looking through, you know, um, in the newspaper also, and someone's Your died, mom. so, yeah. I think the idea that people are really suffering. I remember the story of a great aunt of mine complaining that when she opened the coffin to show her dead husband to neighbours, the coffin hinges squeaked. And she went to put oil on them, and then she realised, well, I'm not going to do this for more than another day, so why bother? I took the oil back and demanded the money. That's a very well story too, I think. And what about the one about the, the husband who's going to die and, and says, uh, I, uh, she goes, oh, not long now, Gwen. He says, no, is there anything you'd like? I'd love some salmon. You'd like some salmon? I'd love some fresh salmon. And she says, all right. And she goes away and comes back and spoons. And he goes, oh. So he goes, but that's not salmon, is it? He goes, that's tuna. And she says, yes, we're keeping the salmon for the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> My dad goes to funerals of people I don't think he actually knows very well. That's quite a Welsh <laughs> thing, isn't it? Yeah. I do think there's that sort of, oh, well, I could have seen that coming, couldn't you? We were foolish to get our hopes up. I don't know what to say about that. What's the point? You put me in a gloomy mood now. Well, we're both a bit gloomy. I There's know. a lot to be gloomy about if you look around there the is, world. Yeah. What's the point? Do you ever think that? Yeah, yeah. quite often. Quite often, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you sort of glimpse the futility of life? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Do you feel, what's the bloody point? Yeah. Yeah? Or young, you probably say, what's the fucking point? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you cock. Something like that. <laughs> well, I remember when, if you tolerate this, went to number one and it was, we'd beat steps to get to number one oh, and it was just a joy. Fair play. <laughs> a joyous occasion. And within, <laughs> but within 20 minutes, we were all on the bus and you could just feel it coming over us. Seriously. You could just, the three of... He did a thing once where he said, there's something inherently funny about saying the Welsh. He said, you can say, da dum, da dum, the Welsh. <laughs> I know, but you know, it's Stephen Fry, it must be right. People think of like when they good when they think of Wales as quite common. Sometimes like it like commoners, do you know what I mean? Well, like, people think, think of, of the Welsh people as quite common. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean like, yeah, like they're all like if you go somewhere else they're like, oh they're all miners and things like that. Well I think the other Welsh people are all a bit like that, a bit all <laughs> stupid. Like that. Absolutely. Well I I do stuff like that. See in my act I, I do a character who sort of talks like this where I say, you know, you could never have a Welsh Spider-Man, because he'd be like, all right, Peter Parker, my name is. Sorry I'm late. I've been down the laboratory. <laughs> well, super drug it was. <laughs> I've been bitten by a, by a spider. It was only in radioactive. <laughs> it's turned my life around. I'm shooting webs, climbing up walls, swinging around buildings. Rightly or wrongly, the only downside of being imbued with the powers of a spider is I am finding it very difficult getting out of the bath. <laughs> <laughs> now that though... I think the Welsh have an immense capacity for self-deprecation. But I'm not sure it amounts to laughing at themselves very much. However, I think we often think the Welsh have no humour, and that's not true. I don't know, I think the number of jokes that are made about the Welsh, like in terms of shagging sheep, or sort of, you know, being a bit strange in some ways, uh, are pretty much welcomed with open arms. I mean, most of the jokes about sheep have been made by Welsh people, haven't they, I think? The Welsh are particularly have... have very little sense of humour about themselves. Very funny people in a lot of ways. Absolutely not about being Welsh. See, I notice you now, this demeanour of you, you know, you're famous for being incredibly funny. You're being incredibly serious now about Wales. Well, I have to, because <laughs> I'm consorting with the enemy <laughs> at the moment, and I'm fighting any inclination to agree with anything you say. <laughs> I think to play to a Welsh audience, there's nothing wrong about laughing at who the Welsh are, laughing at the way they take their nationality too seriously, laughing at the, the way the language is a sacrosanct topic. And it's only when we actually confront some of our demons and actually confront the fact that why are we so defensive about our nationality, why are we unwilling to have external people laugh at us, until we actually talk about those issues, then we will never 
move on. We shouldn't be pompous about it, you see. The fact that you're doing these jokes, you do comedy and you do Welsh comedy, which is, I mean, wonderfully funny. And people shouldn't be saying, well, I resent that remark. Because if you can't do it, who the hell can What comes, I imagine, from having part your own language and then part having to accept its failure to have caught on. <laughs> so, which is the only way it's I can... failure to have well, caught the only, on. That's the only way I can describe it. The language has failed to catch on. Hasn't it? Well, it has, hasn't it? There's no other way of putting well, where it. Where do you want it to catch? I mean, people of Denmark, we don't speak Danish in England, but you don't say all oh, that... Yeah, that, but that, you that. don't go to Denmark and the signs are printed in Danish and English, and people no, they're talk... not that polite, are they? In this country, at least we have no, the trouble right. of putting them in okay, English as well. OK, OK, are you... OK, here's the problem, do you, are you fluent Welsh? No. Is Ruth fluent Welsh? Well, like, no. she says no, but I think she's pretty she's good. She's not, well, she's not, and right. she never uses it. Yeah. I've yet to meet a Frenchman who isn't fluent in <laughs> French, right? It, like, just face it, it's a fact, the language hasn't caught on. My father and mother were both Welsh-speaking, but my mother wouldn't speak Welsh to me because she perceived it to be um, the language of the poor. My mother had to have card wool around her neck it, when she, the kids when they spoke Welsh because they had to wipe it out because the English owned, they were the boss, they, the bosses. They had to put the notice up saying, you will come to work wherever time you go. I mean, uh, so they had to have English yeah. in order to, in, to work with these people. But at the same time, um, I'm not fervent about it, you see. I love it deeply. I mean, I could fuck it, it's so beautiful, and I applaud it. I stroke it, I caress it, I love it. But I'm not going to do this for it. The position regarding the Welsh language has come full circle. Whereas it used to be seen that Welsh held you back, today Welsh is regarded as opening doors for you. It's taught compulsorily in schools and people are very strongly behind that. They feel that speaking Welsh opens doors in the public sector, in the media, in education. So it's seen as having some real social status for, um, attached to it and people associated it in particular with a mobile middle class who's trying to get their kids to go on. Just over a hundred years ago there was an, an awful lot of evidence like where in that Welsh knot that the kids had to in school, you know. I don't know about this. Oh, there's something called a Welsh knot, which was a lump of wood, OK? Uh, and, you know, it was... If anyone spoke a Welsh, then he was given one of these and ended up with a Welsh knot. Yeah. At the end of the day, you were punished in some sort of way. The Welsh knot is shrouded in myth. It's taken on a status where people assume it was responsible for the crushing of the Welsh language. It's actually far more complicated than that. It was never very widely used. It, it was only based in certain parts of Wales, and it was Welsh teachers who were implementing it. Certainly once education becomes compulsory at the end of the 19th century, it was never, ever an official policy. So people associate it as one of the reasons for why the Welsh language declined, but it certainly wasn't the policy of some evil English government trying to stamp out the Welsh language. In men's school, if they speak English, you know, they, they got a mark on the, on the wall and the board, you know, they got a smiling face if they haven't spoken English all day. When she opened the coffin to show her dead husband to neighbours, the coffin hinges squeaked and she went to put oil on them and then she realised, well, I'm not going to do this for more than another day, so why bother? I took the oil back and demanded the money. That's a very well story too, I think. And what about the one about the, the husband who's going to die and, and says, uh, I, uh, she goes, oh, not long now, Gwen. He says, no, is there anything you'd like? I'd love some salmon. You'd like some salmon? I'd love some fresh salmon. And she says, all right. And she goes away and comes back and spoons. And he goes, oh. He goes, but that's not salmon, is it? He goes, that's tuna. And she says, yes, we're keeping the salmon for the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> My dad goes to funerals of people I don't think he actually knows very well. That's quite a Welsh thing, isn't it? Yeah. I do think there's that sort of, oh, well, I could have seen that coming, couldn't you? We were foolish to get our hopes up. I don't know what to say about that. What's the point? You put me in a gloomy mood now. Well, we're both a bit gloomy. I there's know. a lot to be gloomy about if you look around there the world. Is, yeah. What's the point? Do you ever think that? Yeah. Yeah, quite often. Quite often, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you sort of glimpse the futility of life? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Do you feel, what's the bloody point? Yeah. Yeah? Or young, you'd probably say, what's the fucking point? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you cock. Something like that. <laughs> I remember when, if you tolerate this, went to number one and it was... We'd beat steps to get a number one, oh, and it was just a joy, fair play, a joyous occasion. And within, 
But within 20 minutes, we were all on the bus, and you could just feel it coming over us. <laughs> Seriously? You could just the three of us, you know, wait, what do we do next? Oh, it didn't... It sold 20,000 less than we thought it would, or, you know... It just... It's just inbuilt in us. Is there a word for enjoy in, in the language? We won't allow a word for enjoy. <laughs> We, we thought of having a word for enjoy, Adrian, but in the end we thought, well, how often are we going to use it? <laughs> exactly. There is a certain pessimism that came, I think, from Puritanism, which was a great backbone to people and uh, serious difficulties and poverty, but on the other hand does make for a certain dourness. You do see some of the gloomy worlds, but I've only seen them on television. By TV companies, I suppose, is what This is what I do. Oh, OK, right, right, <laughs> OK. Don't give it that easy. <laughs> but, you know, you said, oh, you wonderful and you would. You know, you see that sort of character being portrayed over and over again. I don't know why. But it has no root in reality. It's absolutely no root in any reality I know. But there was no part of you then, in, during your incarceration, that, that gave in to that Welsh gloominess, which I still insist exists. exists. No, I mean, I'm not... A number of jokes that are made about the Welsh, like in terms of shagging sheep or sort of, you know, being a bit strange in some ways, uh, are pretty much welcomed with open arms. I mean, most of the jokes about sheep have been made by Welsh people, haven't they, I think? The Welsh are particularly have, have very little sense of humour about themselves. Very funny people in a lot of ways. Absolutely not about being Welsh. See, I notice you now, this demeanour of you, you know, you... Man, famous for being incredibly funny. You're being incredibly serious now about Wales. Well, I have to, because <laughs> I'm consorting with the enemy <laughs> at the moment, and I'm fighting any inclination to agree with anything you say. <laughs> I think to play to a Welsh audience, there's nothing wrong about laughing at who the Welsh are, laughing at the way they take their nationality too seriously, laughing at the, the way the language is a sacrosanct topic. And it's only when we actually confront some of our demons and actually confront the fact that why are we so defensive about our nationality, why are we unwilling to have external people laugh at us, until we actually talk about those issues, then we will never move on. We shouldn't be pompous about it, you see. The fact that you're doing these jokes, you do comedy and you do Welsh comedy, which is, I mean, wonderfully funny, and people shouldn't be saying, well, I resent that remark. Because if you can't do, who the hell can? Girl, girl at the back? <laughs> well, we in Wales, we've got the highest rate of teen pregnancy, the highest binge drinking, and we've got the highest... <laughs> and it's nothing to be proud of, no, though. Sure, it's nothing to be proud of. You don't hear it in America, you don't hear it in Ireland, but only in Wales. Why is that? Why is that definitely fact? We've definitely got the highest teenage pregnancies. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, some of you guys is putting it about. That is good. <laughs> People say we're a small country, but we're leading the way in many ways. <laughs> we're just the highest teenage pregnancies yes. of anywhere. You know, the country that likes to say yes. Yes! <laughs> yes! 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 I think it's because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> nothing else to do, that man at the back there. Is, is that why you've no, contributed to these figures? No, that's not. <laughs> awesome. I think it's plenty to do, I do. It's just there's lots of people hanging about on streets and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. But that's everywhere, I think. It's just we're more, you know, hands on. <laughs> <laughs> we're more organised. We're more organised, yeah. I mean, what it is, they've got bin drinking and teenage pregnancies all over the UK. I will say in Wales, we are more organised. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for that. That's great. And I'm going to use the material about bin drinking and teenage pregnancy, so thank you for that. And your line of, uh, that's going in, definitely. My first gig is on Friday at the Glee Club in Cardiff. I've yes. never played there, you must have played there. Quite a lot. What's it like? Brilliant. Best club in the world. Welsh audiences. I think we're very self-deprecating. We look on the positive side of things. <laughs> we're we're really? passionate, yeah. yeah I All right, Rob. Good man. I've not found what I thought I was going to find on this. Oh, no. So has yeah. that ruined the whole programme? No, it's, I think, hopefully, it's, it's made it more interesting, but it's, it's been strange for me. I've also found myself becoming far more patriotic and becoming quite... Because I've spent much more time in Wales, I've been going to different parts of Wales, I've been playing to different crowds, and I'm actually feeling quite, uh, you know... A camera? Uh, yeah, I am, yeah. <laughs> You 
it might surprise you, but I love Wales as well. And I'm very proud of being Welsh, but just in a different way to you. I believe you. Thousands of them. I feel about I'm you. good. I'm looking forward to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's always that feeling, don't you get, before, before you go on, where you think, is this going to be the disastrous one? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like this has been absolutely life-changing for you. It's been re it's been much bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah, is it? It's put me it's put me back in touch. It's made me feel much more Welsh and proud of being Welsh. Has it? Yes. So it's yeah. really um, made you look at your identity then. Yeah. Well, it makes yeah it makes you examine what you take for granted. What a lovely welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And it is, if I may say, a beautiful audience. It is a very aesthetically pleasing audience. For me, I get to look and see uh, some real, real stunners. <laughs> well, I suppose shocking more than stunning. <laughs> All right, upsetting. Um, we're making a documentary, and it's all about being Welsh. <laughs> we're not a healthy nation, are we? <laughs> it's all across my shoulders. It's down my arm. My left hand is a permanent claw. Oh, this damp, you see, it's very damp. I shouldn't have come out tonight, really. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, just on cue. <laughs> so I'm making this documentary called Rob Brydon's Identity Crisis, all about Wales. As they go, I used to have terrible trouble with all the place names. <laughs> it wasn't part of my upbringing. I had to be able to pronounce Swansea, Neath, Portalba, and there's a floor manager who I'm sure didn't like me. And he keeps, you can see him on these outtakes, he comes up to me and he's saying, uh, Rob, it's uh, Glinda Rudry. Glinda Rudry, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, well, exactly. And I'm going, OK, so. I think you're saying us. it wrong. Is it in Glinda Rudry? How, how, how do you pronounce it? Glinda Rudry. Glinda Rudry. Yeah, if you do it in two sections, Glinda Rudry. Right, so there we are. So, so, I, so I still haven't improved. It's what a Glinda Rudry. Glinda Rudry. Which famous Welsh man was born at Glinda Rudwy? No, wrong. I think it's Glinda Rudwy. Glinda Rudwy. I think the R is silent. Dubridwy, right. So it's Glinda Rudwy. But I've said it wrong on radio once and somebody rang in to complain. Which famous Welsh man was born in Glinda Rudwy? <laughs> the point is, in terms of how you feel about your country, is that at that time I was getting cheesed off with this floor manager. Which famous <laughs> Welsh man? Faster than that? Uh, yeah, the question can, but take, take the word. Which famous Welsh man was born in Glinda Vrydoy? Th I'm thinking, why is this, what's this such a big deal? I'm trying to do it right. But now, as I get older, I'm thinking, no, he was right. Of course you should say these things properly. Glinda Vrydoy. Vrydoy. Okay. OK, <clears throat> right, we're ready now. OK, once again. And you should be able to pronounce them. Which famous Welsh man was born in Glyndyfrydoy? That's it. Did it? I think that Welsh people are often overly dramatic in their use of language. Yeah, well, it's a, but it's a dramatic tone of speaking as well, you know. And this thing of like, well, this this is what comes, I imagine, from having part your own language, and then part having to accept its failure to have caught on. So. <laughs> Which is the only way it's I can... failure to have well, caught on. That's the only way I can describe it. The language has failed to catch on. Hasn't it? Well, it has, hasn't it? There's no other way of putting well, where it. Where do you want it to catch... I mean, people of Denmark, we don't speak Danish in England, but you don't say all oh, that... Yeah, that, that, but you that... don't go to Denmark and the signs are printed in Danish and English, and people no, they're not talk... that polite, are they, in this country? At least we have no. the trouble right. of putting them in okay. English as well. OK, OK, are you... OK, here's the problem. Do you... Are you fluent Welsh? No. Is Ruth fluent Welsh? Well, like, no. she says no, but I think she's pretty she's good. She's not. Well, she's not, and right. she never uses it. Yeah. I've yet to meet a Frenchman 
who isn't fluent in French, right? It, like, just face it, it's a fact, the language hasn't caught on. My father and mother were both Welsh speaking, but my mother wouldn't speak Welsh to me because she perceived it to be... Um, like commoners, do you know what I mean? Like, people think of the Welsh people as quite common. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, um, like, they're all... Like, if you go somewhere else, they're like, oh, they're all miners and things like that. Or I think they're the Welsh people are all a bit like that, a bit <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Like that. Absolutely. Well, I, I do stuff like that. See, in my act, I, I do a character who sort of talks like this, where I say, you know, you could never have a Welsh Spider-Man, because he'd be like, all right, Peter Parker, my name is. Sorry I'm late. I've been down the laboratory. <laughs> well, super drug it was. <laughs> I've been bitten by a, by a spider. It was only in radioactive. <laughs> it's turned my life around. Shooting webs, <laughs> climbing up walls, <laughs> swinging around buildings. Rightly or wrongly, the only downside of being imbued with the powers of a spider is I am finding it very difficult getting out of the bath. <laughs> <laughs> now, that though. I think the Welsh have an immense capacity for self deprecation but I'm not sure it amounts to laughing at themselves very much. However, I think we often think the Welsh have no humour, and that's not true. I don't know, I think the number of jokes that are made about the Welsh, like in terms of shagging sheep, or sort of, you know, being a bit strange in some ways, uh, are pretty much welcomed with open arms. I mean, most of the jokes about sheep have been made by Welsh people, haven't they, I think? The Welsh are particularly have... have very little sense of humour about themselves. Very funny people in a lot of ways. Absolutely not about being Welsh. See, I notice you now, this demeanour of you, you know, you're man, famous for being incredibly funny. You're being incredibly serious now about Wales. Well, I have to, because <laughs> I'm consorting with the enemy <laughs> at the moment, and I'm fighting any inclination to agree with anything you say. <laughs> I think to play to a Welsh audience, there's nothing wrong about laughing at who the Welsh are, laughing at the way they take their nationality too seriously, laughing at the, the way the language is a sacrosanct topic. And it's only when we actually confront some of our demons and actually confront the fact that why are we so defensive about our nationality, why are we unwilling to have external people laugh at us, until we actually talk about those issues, then we will never move on. We shouldn't be pompous about it, you see. The fact that you're doing these jokes, you do comedy and you do Welsh comedy, which is, I mean, wonderfully funny. And people shouldn't be saying, well, I resent that remark. Because if you can't do, who the hell can? Girl, girl at the back. <laughs> well, in Wales, we've got the highest rate of teen pregnancy, the highest binge drinking, and we've got the highest... <laughs> and it's nothing to be proud of, no, though. Sure, it's nothing to be proud of. You don't hear it in America, you don't hear it in Ireland. We're only in Wales.